Miss Universe. Miss Universe 1997. We're here in my home state of Hawaii at the beautiful Hilton Hawaiian Village, one of the sites for this year's Miss Universe pageant. In the next hour, you'll find out who will be the next Miss Universe and see what happens when 81 beautiful and ambitious competitors take over the Hawaiian Islands. We'll tag along with America's own Shawnee Devia, Miss USA 1998, as she prepares for the pageant. Along the way, we'll get the inside scoop on the incredible successes, last-minute mishaps, as well as the crushing defeat many of the beauties will face during the competition. Stay with us as he brings you an exclusive look behind the scenes of the Miss Universe pageant. They've come from around the world. 81 competitive women vying to become the next Miss Universe. I've been preparing since I was three years old because it's been something I've wanted for all my life. Well, when we look for our new Miss Universe, what we're looking for is a woman that's representative of, um, you know, a woman of 1998. Um, and it's not about measurements, it's about just being healthy and fit, um, and that has a sense of style. Ladies, we need you on stage right now. The Miss Universe pageant began in 1952 as the world's first international beauty contest. Miss Thailand. Jaraman Savatana. She's 24 years old, has black hair and black eyes. She's 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighs 115 pounds. And 5 pounds of that is her name. <laughs> I'm told that a full oriental kitchen and staff is maintained for the girls from that part of the world. For example, the chefs work on a specially prepared dish called sushi for Miss Japan. Rice and pickles rolled in seaweed. Mmm, ah, make mine pizza. Becoming a delegate in the Miss Universe pageant has never been easy. Each year, the competition attracts thousands of young hopefuls from around the globe. For many, it's the experience of a lifetime. Many of these women have never been out of their own country. Lots of them have never been out of their little county or their little African village. And now here they are, clear around the world in Hawaii. You're bringing in 81 women from around the world. What we've created here is sort of a, a mini United Nations. Like the United Nations, the pageant strives to create cooperation amongst the countries. A very interesting thing about these women is that even though their countries may not get along and they may fight amongst themselves, if you look at Croatia and Yugoslavia or Israel, and Egypt, they're all very friendly. But also like the UN, not everyone gets along. I think that uh, some countries, yeah, they're competitive. But I think that part of being competitive is that you can't be outwardly competitive, you know? <laughs> like, you can't be like, ah, excuse me, get away from me. I mean, some Latin countries come and and it's like a fashion show, you know. They come with their own designers' wardrobes, you know, and, and um, some people are unfortunate. With so many different personalities competing for the spotlight, getting the pageant ready for live TV is a monumental task. In the three weeks before the telecast, the 81 women competing in Miss Universe endure a grueling schedule that leaves little time for rest. Well, we have to get up like at 6 a.m. We have set, uh, breakfast 7 to 8. Then we'd get ready and maybe we have some shooting, some filming like today. And then at the afternoon we have rehearsal. Opening number from the top, please. Here we go. And then we go home. In the evening, we have to be ready at 6, 7 o'clock for going out. And we come back at, in the hotel at 10, 11. So we have no time for us. <laughs> it gets tiring sometimes. Sometimes you kind of have to paste that smile on, <laughs> whether you want to smile or not. <laughs> One woman who's used to working a tough schedule is the current Miss USA, 26-year-old fitness buff Shawnee Jebbia. I have never been in the pageantry growing up in my life, so I've been athletic, um, Division One volleyball player, ran the Boston Marathon, so to me, entering the pageantry was challenging a different part of myself. I think everybody asked us, uh, you know, that uh, she must have had a lot of experience, and uh, they were fairly surprised to understand that really the Miss Massachusetts was the first opportunity she had to be in a pageant. 
Although Shawnee is a newcomer to pageantry, her family has always recognized her strong drive to compete. She um, started roller skating at uh, six years old. She roller skated for a couple of years and went to national championships after two years of skating. The second year, she wound up to be fourth in the United States. I watched her as a girl about this high on roller skates competing. Yeah. And right away, you know, this gal is going to be energetic all of her life. Yet, despite Shawnee's love of competition, her win at the Miss USA pageant was far from a sure thing. I came in the day of the pageant, and uh, we didn't have a whole lot of expectation. And how do you like Miss Massachusetts, Shawnee Jebbia? And when she got top ten, we were, of course, pretty excited. And as she elevated uh, through the contest, we got more and more excited. You hope, but, and you dream, but, oh, when a dream comes true, <laughs> It's, it's a little bit overwhelming, yeah. And if your name's Sex, you have to stand up in the chair when she gets down 10, 5, 3, and the 1, and just give it everything you got. <laughs> it's got a little scary at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the first runner-up is Miss California Shana Gamble, Miss Massachusetts Shana Jebbia. You are the new Miss USA 19. The day after the Miss USA contest, uh, they put her to work that day mm -hmm. and uh, actually told her not to worry about her apartment in Boston and uh, any of her things uh, because she was going to work and she could worry about that later. Although Shawnee's first priority is getting ready for the Miss Universe pageant, she still has to fulfill her duties as Miss USA. It's a tight schedule that doesn't leave much time for preparation. As far as being busy, I'm very busy, and I'm just trying to remember in my head right now things that I do, because if I don't have my publicist or someone helping me remember all these things, they really do, they kind of jumble together. But uh, I went to New York, presented, taught me a vocalist at the American um, Country Music Award, so I'm still coming down from that. I do have a homecoming in Boston, which is wonderful, but I was only there for two and a half days, and I got to uh, go out and visit an orphanage uh, that's been there since the Civil War. When I was little, there weren't any fancy ice cream trucks like there are now. Then I went to visit just some friends there at the firehouse. I was very close friends with the firehouse in Boston. I'd park there all the time when I'd come in the city. Engine 7. Gotta love them. These men save lives. The Miss USA is preparing me for Miss Universe. I'll tell you that. I'm busy and enjoying every second. As she prepares to leave for the Miss Universe pageant, Shawnee hopes for a big win. But whatever the judges decide, Miss USA still looks forward to her upcoming year. I miss USA either way and, or, or Miss Universe, so I can be happier. Uh, I'm just going to go and, and represent our country the best I can and have a ball. Okay. I think that's it. Can you believe it? One, two, three, four. Four bags. Have a light. I hear it's seven to twelve trunks is the average, so USA and... I'm going a little light, but don't worry, I'll carry the weight. <laughs> You're welcome. Here we go, I'm making it. <laughs> okay, bye, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Have a trip. Coming up, find out which girls are the toughest competitors. Much more cutthroat. They have been trained since they were little, and God, they're perfection. I mean, they are perfect. These women are perfect. But first, we'll catch up with Miss USA as she arrives in sunny Hawaii. Welcome back to the E! Original Special, behind the scenes of Miss Universe. I'm Brooke Lee, Miss Universe 1997. We've been following Miss USA Shawnee Jebbia as she prepares to compete for the title of Miss Universe. Let's catch up with her and the 80 other delegates as they hit the shores of Hawaii. When I got off the plane, I kept seeing all of these girls, these gorgeous uh, girls from all over. I just, I thought this is going to be interesting. After a long and tiring journey to Hawaii, the delegates are eager to soak up the island sun. But there's no rest in sight for these international beauties. Good, you guys. Hold it. Nice attitude. Make sure that you are smiling at the time that you need to be. Good attitude for yourselves. Vying for the Miss Universe crown takes a lot of hard work. That's because the pageant is not only a competition, but a television show seen around the world. 
The contestants must rehearse endlessly to pull off the elaborate production, an undertaking made even harder by language barriers. All right, guys. That number's gonna work. It's gonna work. Dance is universal, so I do an awful lot of this. And they get that. Rehearsals are uh, somewhat unusual because you're dealing with 42 different languages. So what you can normally do, okay, here's how you do it. One, two, three. Let's hear how you do it. One, two, three, 42 different times because we have to go through a lot of translators and interpreters. The 81 women practice up to 12 hours a day for nearly three weeks for what's intended to be a seamless live show. If there is a mistake, that's what's fun about it. You know, that's the da, that's the dish, that's the talk. People go, did you see that show when she fell down? Not that we want that to happen, but that's live TV. Anything can happen, and I think that, you know, that for me, that's the fun. Uh, some people sort of panic at it. That, that's what glues me together. That's why I do this. A five, six, seven, go, one. Whether a skilled dancer or not, each delegate has to master several musical numbers. And since no one knows who's going to win, much less make it to the top ten, every contestant must memorize a precise series of stage positions that the finalists will take during the telecast. Ready? And walk. Go. Basically, their day is, is exhausting because we give so much information in a short period of time. Then that evening, they have to go out and be beautiful. So, I mean, as far as a day in the life of a beauty queen, it ain't easy, I don't think. I mean, I think it's pretty difficult. Once again, same thing. Here we go. We have a lot of rehearsals, and uh, it's very difficult. We are very tired. We didn't have, like, the chance to know a lot of places because we're so busy rehearsals and shootings and all that stuff. They're putting us to the test, seeing if we can handle it, because I'm sure once you're Miss Universe, it's going to be a lot more hectic. In between the grueling rehearsals, the delegates participate in preliminary swimsuit and evening gown competitions. Local judges winnow the 81 contestants down to 10 finalists. But the top 10 are kept top secret until the televised pageant. The prelims culminate with the national costume competition, in which the contestants showcase the flavor of their home countries. Honduras. Each of the delegates come in a national costume that's best reflective of their country's culture. And um, some of these costumes, they're so ornate. The national costumes is uh, a lot of people's favorite event because it's a true celebration of all of the, cu the cultures. Although the event isn't factored into the contestants' scores, some of the women hire high-priced fashion designers to create their costumes. Others spend countless hours designing and sewing their own. The United States of America. Well, it's liberty. I'm the lady of liberty, so I feel comfortable being that. The winner of the national costume. came to get her award, she kind of turned around and she took out everyone's eye with the feathers and she turned around. And the rest of them were behind like this as the photos were getting taken because of the head. It was six foot in diameter, but it was absolutely beautiful. This is a costume I wore during our carnival celebrations in Trinidad. It is called Freedom and it symbolizes the many cultures that come together in my country. Because in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a mix of everybody. This cross-cultural extravaganza relieves some of the tension amongst the delegates, but only temporarily. The pageant is just a few days away, and that's when the drama heats up again. Still to come, find out how far some women will go in their quest for the crown. Sometimes competition brings out the worst in people, and that's just human nature. But next, the contestants take some time out for a little fun in the sun. Welcome back to E's original special, Behind the Scenes of Miss Universe. I'm Brooke Lee. Coming up, find out who will be crowned the next Miss Universe. But first, let's check back with Miss USA, Shawnee Jebbia. Ah, uh, let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. We have to bring myself three weeks of events.
Although the girls came to Hawaii to compete in the pageant, they did have a little fun. Al Massini, co-chairman of the Hawaiian Host Committee, planned the delegate's social calendar. We wanted to have an exciting uh, series of events for them. Every single night, something happening, something that was very exciting that would also portray Hawaii. Oh, gosh. Uh, Thank you very much. They got a flavor of Hawaii that first night, and they actually had a luau. We want to share with you our culture, your dance, our chant. And all you have to do is sit down, relax, and enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, yep. welcome to Old Hawaii. Oh, my God. After pigging out on the traditional Hawaiian meal of pork and poi, the delegates ran off to the All-Star Cafe, where their athletic abilities were put to the test in a rather unusual way. Each one of the girls got to put Shaquille O'Neal's 22, <laughs> size 22 shoe on, and uh, we got to just run up and shoot a basket, so it was really fun, just made us feel relaxed. Come on, this is America! Whether shooting hoops in Shaq's shoes or salsa dancing at sea, these lively ladies always had a good time. That was fun because that was actually the Latin night. All the girls got to just let loose with their type of dancing and it was really fun. So we just kind of sat back and went, these girls are wild. <laughs> After partying on the high seas, the delegates were invited to a high society soiree. The governor's ball was a memorable experience for me. Just being at my age um, to experience that type of social elite event and um, to see how I could handle the pressure. <laughs> for the final event before the big day, the delegates got together to say goodbye to Miss Universe 1997, Hawaii native Brooke Mahealani Lee. There was a big reception for Brooke which was wonderful. We got to see a little bit of her feeling of the island and her home. She is so beautiful and so intelligent that um, I honor her for what she's done to the pageant life. One of these lucky ladies will become the next Miss Universe and find herself in the extraordinary world that Brooke is leaving behind. Brooklyn, our, our Miss Universe, has had the most astonishing years. It all started in Shreveport, Louisiana. At the 1997 Miss USA pageant, Brooke impressed the judges and the audience with her exotic beauty and down-to-earth personality. You are a professional hula dancer. What, is that? What, do you, what do you do professionally? That means I'm a hula dancer and I get paid to do it. Now... After hearing her witty answer, longtime pageant coach Brian Edwards knew that Brooke was not a typical beauty queen. Oh, she's very quick-witted and very, but she also has a wicked sense of humor, too, that you just knew there was something special there. Miss Idaho When Brooke Lee was crowned Miss USA, the buzz was that she was going to win Universe. She's a very well-rounded, very versatile, a unique, interesting beauty. USA! Aloha from the land where freedom reigns. I am Brooke Antoinette Mahill and Lee, Miss USA. She is um, a lot of mystery to her. You know, she's very spunky, very sparky, and sassy. If there were no rules in your life for one day, and you could be outrageous, what would you do? I would eat everything in the world. You do not understand. I would eat everything twice. She's not your usual pageant contestant. There's no way you could even categorize her like that. Miss Universe, Miss USA, Brooke Mahalani Lee. Congratulations, Brooke. You are the new Miss Universe. She won Miss Universe. She began the whirlwind tour of going all over the world. I have been very busy. I've been in 13 countries. They just could not get enough of her. She was like, the world was like a sponge and they was absorbed uh, with the waters of Brooke Lee. Every country she visited embraced her, but Korea most of all. I'm the first one of Korean ancestry to ever win in a very long time. I got to stand on Korean soil. While visiting that country, Brooke became the spokesmodel for a Korean cosmetics company. Hawaii! As she passes on the crown of Miss Universe, Brooke reflects on her glorious year in the international spotlight. 
It went too fast, too fast, I think. El Nino, I think is what it was. <laughs> Faster than normal. And it was a strange, wonderful bubble in my life. I never planned it. I mean, I ran as a dark horse in the running, and I took everything with a grain of salt. Her reign may be over, but Brooke will get one last taste of the royal treatment as she returns home. There's love, love at Miss Universe. They're taking me in a limo and taking me back to the neighborhood and putting me back where I was where they first found me. Still to come, an exclusive bird's eye view of the contestants as they get ready to strut their stuff for the live broadcast. You put them in there all fighting for a crown, and they're all, you know, it's, it's going to get hot backstage. It's not going to be a pretty sight. Welcome back to E's original special, Behind the Scenes of Miss Universe. We're here at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, where the Miss Universe delegates stay while in Honolulu. With 81 countries represented at the pageant, the women competing in Miss Universe are a diverse group. And while preparing for the elaborate show would be difficult for anyone, the language barriers and cultural differences among the delegates present some unique challenges. Language is, is, um, is very different because a lot of people, a lot of the girls speak uh, Spanish and my Spanish is not very good. <laughs> you try to find the word that stands for, you know, eyelashes. Because I'm like, oh, muy bonita, which is very pretty eyelashes. Okay. It's a challenge for me to no, communicate with them. We have to do a lot of hand gestures. With over 50 languages spoken at the pageant, communication can be difficult. Choreographer Scott Grossman relies on more primitive methods of interaction, which can often create misunderstandings. I literally take a lot of their bodies and physically go, you are standing here. And she's looking at me like, say what? I'm like, no, it's okay. Hold, and then I move the next body. the girls were um, questioning me, were asking me why I put salt and pineapple. <laughs> In our country, we eat pineapple with salt. My roommate, Miss South Africa, didn't know how many cents make a dollar, and that was mind-blowing to me. <laughs> I come to the breakfast table, it was cookies. Cookies for breakfast. <laughs> I was going, wow, this is America. Yet, while language, currency, and cuisine may lead to some cross-cultural confusion, there are other more profound differences. Competition is more with some groups than others, and those people gravitate towards each other. Some delegates are more competitive than others because their countries place a higher value on the title. Former Miss USA Laura Herring believes contestants from Latin America are the toughest competitors, but for good reason. In South America, if you have won Miss Venezuela or Miss Colombia, you are automatically a star. You are a celebrity. You can sing. You can dance. You can be whatever you want. A VJ, a host, an actor. In the Latin American countries, this is part of their culture. They are trained to do this. Um, in other countries, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the unique individual. All the delegates hope to bring international recognition to their home countries. But the women from Latin America have even more at stake. Being a beauty queen in Venezuela and several countries in Latin America is like true royalty. It's really looked up as, as nobility. That puts immense pressure on the women who've spent a lifetime preparing for the pageant. With the whole nation watching, being eliminated early in the competition can be devastating. Interesting enough, about three years ago, when the girls are chosen from the from their, their masses to ten finalists, the girls go backstage, and there's a lot of disappointment, let's face it. You know, you put all this effort into it, and you don't make one of the top ten. Well, pretty much you're done with the show. So they went backstage, and all the South American countries went back and, and lit their cigarettes and pulled out their purses, and they go, he speaks, he speaks, he speaks, pageant. I not go back on stage, he speaks. And they stop their feet, they walk up, and I'm like this. Please go back on stage. He speaks. He speaks pageant. I go, go, no, go back. People are serious in Latin America. They are. They have been trained since they're little, and God, they're perfection. I mean, they are perfect. According to pageant coach Brian Edwards, extensive preparation doesn't guarantee a pageant win. Still, some contestants go to extreme lengths to compete. First of all, they got to get the body in shape. Whatever they um, can achieve as far as working out, um, exercise aerobics. But if they need to make a fully proportioned body, then you come into the plastic surgery where the options are having ribs removed uh, to diminish the waistline. Then you have breast augmentation, you have your nose, you have cheek implants, you have everything you can possibly think of. 
Some of the women think plastic surgery and extensive training give contestants an unfair advantage. Some of the delegates that have been prepared for many years have had a lot of alterations. And I know you heard it before again, but you know some of them had liposuction, some had breast implants. Whatever you want to change, believe you, there's a doctor on every corner in the pageant world that will change it. It was all split into two. There are people like me that have never done them before. That um, you know, we're in for it for the fun. And there are people who have been almost farmed, trained. Um, they've had like plastic surgery to make them look like previous winners, or you know, enhance their bodies. Um, have liposuction, breast implants, nose, lips, that sort of thing, which wasn't you know wasn't really fair. For those contestants who cannot afford it or cannot do it, they should not hold that against the ones who can. Because, look, it's a game. I mean, it's a sport. It's, it's competition. You do what you have to do to win. Yet, while the Miss Universe pageant has always been competitive, not every woman makes winning her first priority. There's still the, the, the gung-ho, you know, pageant girls that are serious and that's their life. And the ones who have fun with it, take it easy, it's an adventure. And if they win, they win. And if they don't, and they usually have more chances of winning, funny enough. CEO Molly Miles agrees. She insists that each delegate has an equal chance of winning the title, whether or not she's been trained or had her body augmented. In some countries, a pageant is big business. It's really important, and they really, really work on having the perfect woman. But it doesn't matter, because they all have an equal chance, and their personality rises through. If you don't have the money for plastic surgery, then you spend $4 for a roll of duct tape, and you tape up what God gave you, as little as it may be. You know, you just start at the navel and pull all the way up and tape, put the dress on, and hit the runway. Well, going back to the this duct tape stuff isn't working anymore. That's what I said. Still in all, you can spend all the money in the world and still lose. Or you can come there with nothing and win. You just never know. Still to come, the tension heats up as the pageant begins and 71 contestants are eliminated. A lot of the girls were disappointed, you know, and some of them were even crying. Back to the E! Original Special, behind the scenes of Miss Universe. I'm Brooklyn Miss Universe 1997, here with the Hilton Hawaiian Village Torchlighters. With the pageant just 36 hours away, the moment many of the delegates have spent their entire lives preparing for is fast approaching. Yet although they're exhausted, there's no rest in sight for the 81 Miss Universe hopefuls. The girls were all tired, were stressed, uh, were starting to feel the tension, and um, it's just a matter of of pulling in and, and enjoying the bond between the girls and, and really just focusing on enjoying the moment of being there. The day before the pageant, owner Donald Trump arrives, along with the judges and pageant co-host Julie Moran. One thing that I heard from Donald, he has favorites. Donald has favorites. He tries to influence the judges, and CBS like keeps him away from the judges, like Donald. Now, don't go in there and tell these judges how to vote. So they really quarantine him. We have a great celebrity panel of judges this year. We tried to also keep it very culturally diverse. I'm just going to have to vote for the one that eats the catwalk. That is out there, is like conquering, you know, with her walk and her attitude. Beauty comes from within, but I think that there's certain people just have a sort of an aura and they're instantly attracted. And I guess that, the, you know, that's where they're saying it's not just the beauty, they, there is a component of personality and stuff. And that's what makes for the true Miss Universe. As the day of the pageant arrives, the fans filing in for the telecast have already picked their favorites. We're rooting for Miss U.S. Virgin Islands. We are here to applaud and scream for Miss USA because we're sure she's going to get far into the tent and she's going to be the next Miss Universe. Miss, Miss USA, USA, Johnny Dovia! Yes, Johnny! Miss Canada, Juliana Thiessen from Calgary, Alberta. While the fans wait for the show to begin, the tension builds backstage. With only a few minutes left until the live broadcast, hair and makeup artists scramble to put on the final touches. They're here representing their country. And they feel that this is the moment that, that they should shine. And I don't blame them um, if something's not exactly to their liking, that's going to be seen by their home country, by their, the world at large. Um, I, think, I don't mind them getting a little testy, but that's where uh, myself and the other volunteers come in and, and we smooth out those feathers. Am I nervous? Um, no, I'm having fun. Maybe I'll be nervous right before I go on. Showtime! Showtime! 
After months of preparation, the show finally begins. Tonight, one of 81 women will replace Brooke Lee and be next to wear the crown of Miss Universe. In a matter of seconds, 71 girls will be eliminated. You go on stage and it's, they don't waste a minute in the telecast. Boom, top 10 is picked. All right, the first big moment has arrived. We're about to meet the 10 women who will continue their quest to be Miss Universe 1998. The 10 finalists in random order. You figure out right there that your night's going to continue or your night isn't. Our eighth spot, Miss Venezuela. I got to the end and I, I heard Bruce and I said, oh God, you know, am I going to make it in? The second last spot, ninth position, Miss USA. This is when the competition begins. This is when the, you're, you're full of emotion, but this is when it starts. So just grab a hold of yourself and, and get ready for the ride. There they are, 10 of the most beautiful women in the entire universe. Coming up next, the big moment. Find out who will be crowned the next Miss Universe. I don't know what happened. I think there was a problem with the tabulation. <laughs> the original special behind the scenes of Miss Universe. I'm Brooke Lee. Welcome back to Eve's inside look at the Miss Universe pageant. As you've seen, the delegates have been narrowed down to just 10 lucky women. Now the most difficult part of the competition, the personal interview, is about to begin. When they pick top 10, you're kind of getting a grasp, my gosh, they picked me out of these 81 girls. You're just, uh, wow. Then you don't have a second to breathe. They're bringing you up to answer your questions. Our very first set of interviews is something we call the world tour. And the world tour is designed so that each delegate has been assigned another delegate. Their job is to find out as much as they can about the other person's country. Now you love to cook and you want to open your own restaurant. What did you learn about the food in Costa Rica? The food in Costa Rica, well, their favorite dish is something called kaya pinto, which is rice and beans. And surprisingly, that's pretty much the same in my country as well. I was with the Zimbabwe. Um, you had one of the girls to be aware of, just cultural things, um, music, food, anything that signifies that country. What was the first thing you talked about when you got together? Hi, how are you? Are you having a good time? <laughs> nice start there. <laughs> Did you talk about the culture or any kind of her, uh, the things that she likes to do? Well, first we just kind of looked at each other for a while. With 81 of us, we just stared at each other in the faces. You can see each country in the faces. Very good. Thank you very much. There you just hope for the best. You hope you get a question where you can express your true self. Now tell me, what would you have to change most about yourself if you were to move to her Lebanon? I wouldn't change anything about myself. Being in Lebanon, being in Hawaii, being in anywhere in the world, I wouldn't change anything about myself. I am so happy with myself. And if I change something, everything I am is dead if I'm not myself. Got it. After bearing their souls in the personal interviews, the girls bear their bods in the swimsuit competition. Ladies and gentlemen, wearing London Sasha shoes and not much else, the 1998 Janssen Swimsuit Competition. I was confident I would represent uh, an American girl. We are into fitness in America, we're into health, but this is Miss Universe. Um, maybe the fitness look isn't necessarily what they're looking for, and that's okay. There they are! Ten reasons to hang out on the beaches this summer. With the swimsuit competition behind them, the girls don their best dresses and tease their tresses for the evening gown competition. When the judges look at evening gown, this is where you, this is the individual sense of style. The hair and the makeup um, and the way they hold themselves and their confidence, and it's the whole individual sense of style is what they look for. And there it goes. Right up to the dip. Ten of the most beautiful and elegant women in the world. In a matter of seconds, half of these beauties will be eliminated from the competition. Only five finalists will continue their quest for the crown. There was hoping for your name to be picked. Miss Columbia. I kind of feel like you're on a sporting line in grade school when uh, there's coaches picking, you know, you, 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 and you, and you, you just hope you made the cut. USA! This is it. I'm a happy kid. Um, I've gotten this far out of 81 girls. Trinidad and Tobago! And 
our final spot goes to Miss Venezuela. For these five lucky and lovely finalists, it's time to be quizzed by a national newsman. So here to put them to the test is Jose diaz Ballard from the CBS News. From Trinidad and Tobago, Wendy Fitzwilliam. Hi, Wendy. Hi, how are you? Wendy, you love singing, and your fantasy is to record a jazz album. Oh, no. You know where this is going. You know where this is going. <laughs> Sing me a line. Okay. Oh. I fell in love with you the first time I looked into then there I when they narrowed it down to the top five, they're just happy to be there, you know, and focusing on doing well at that point. Based on their answers, two more contestants are eliminated. They pick top three again, or they, they pick the next selection. And then again, you're just hoping you're one of them. Miss Venezuela! The final three, and I was shaking like a leaf. Zero composure. <laughs> just a mess. <laughs> you know? Puerto Rico! In, in the last three, when they announced, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. While Shawnee has been left out in the cold, the night heats up for the final three as they go into the last round of competition. The final three, uh, each girl is going to answer the, is the same question. A woman has just awakened after being asleep for 20 years. What do you tell her she missed? She should quickly remember that everyone can make their lives, uh, their dreams come true, so that she should hurry up and make all the dreams that she had when she was still awake come true now. Oh, she's missed so much in terms of technology, but unfortunately she's also missed our lack of sensitivity to our environment. I tell her that women are still women, and that women will always be women, no matter how long time passes by, because women are the best. Thank you. Thank you. After a quick decision by the judges, it's time to announce Miss Universe 1998. The second runner-up in the 1998 Miss Universe pageant is Miss Puerto Rico. Most people think, like, oh my God, I was so close, that you would be mad. It feels like an honor just to be there. And I'm busy at that point as well, trying to console Varushka because she was in tears, <laughs> you know, that she was that nervous, you know? And I was just like, don't cry, Varushka. You're gonna make us all over you. <laughs> Please, calm down, calm down. You know, she's so young. The first runner-up in the 1998 Miss Universe pageant is Miss Venezuela! Miss Universe 1998, Miss Trinidad and Tobago! Once I won, I, I couldn't believe it. I really could not believe it. Immediately after being crowned Miss Universe 1998, Wendy makes her way to the Coronation Ball, where the delegates relax and reflect on their pageant experience. Always in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm, maybe I'm in the top ten. <laughs> but, you know, that it didn't happen. That was okay. I'm happy that Trinidad and Tobago won. She's very natural. She's very nice, very intelligent. I'm very happy. Coming up next, Get up close and personal with the new Miss Universe, Wendy Fitzwilliam. Welcome back to Eve's one-hour look inside the Miss Universe pageant. I'm Brooke Lee, Miss Universe 1997, here with my dork of a brother, Brendan. With the pageant over, most of the delegates get ready to return to their home country. But for one lucky woman, unlike my sister who's getting kicked to the curb, her life as a new Miss Universe is about to begin. As of today, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be working very hard. Things that I enjoy doing, but it is going to be hard work. For the next year, uh, I'll be traveling all over the world, making appearances. For her first official appearance as Miss Universe, Wendy Fitzwilliam will go back to her island home of Trinidad and Tobago. She'll bring the crown back to a nation which hasn't had a winner in two decades. I told you know that before I left home that I'll do my very best to bring it home for them. Her whirlwind here as an international ambassador begins right after her homecoming. I'll be working with some of my favorite charities, and I would really love to work with any charity that 
uh, deals primarily with children and also focusing on getting myself involved in a career. I really, really enjoy modeling. During her reign, Wendy's home away from home will be Los Angeles. Climate here is great. It's warm enough for a Caribbean girl like me, but it's not too hot. You know, it's comfortable, and I like that. When the beach is nearby, I mean, I'm from Trinidad, hello. Beaches are very important to island girls. <laughs> So um, I think I'm going to enjoy living in L.A. a lot. Wendy's downstairs neighbor is none other than her former competitor, Miss USA, Shawnee Jebbia. I will resume my job as Miss USA. So uh, honored to do so. What I want to do this year is to see myself and work as hard as I can because there's always ups and downs in life. Whatever the year holds for these two winners, both Wendy Fitzwilliam and Shawnee Jebbia will always be able to share their treasured memories of Hawaii. It's much more than just a competition. There were countries, 81 girls, it was such a feeling of um, international flair, of feeling how lucky you are to sit with all these girls in one room. Hawaii was a tremendous experience. Um, meeting the other girls, really making friendships, like with Shawnee, um, with South Africa, my roommate, India, uh, Russia, Sweden. I know these are girls that I'm going to keep in touch with. Miss Universe 1998, Miss Trinidad! It was a really, really wonderful experience. Thanks for watching our exclusive look behind the scenes of the Miss Universe pageant. From the beautiful Hilton Hawaiian Village, I'm Brooklyn reminding you that if it's happening in entertainment, it's happening on E. Aloha. <laughs>